Activate Church. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, we're going to sing a couple songs this morning. I just encourage you to sing and worship with us wherever you are.
song that just sang over our church and sang over our community. I know people are out of their comfort zones, and so I just wanted to read you a verse out of Philippians and just bring you some comfort and new perspective. In chapter 4, verse 6, it says in the message of Philippians, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. And before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. So God, we just thank you for what you're doing this morning. We thank you that, you know, even though we're not together, I thank you that um, this is just going through every form of technology. I thank you that a sense of peace is going over our community. I thank you that as we pray, you're just bringing new perspective into our hearts and into our eyes spiritually of something incredible that you're doing for good through this season. We worship you, we praise you.
that you're with us this morning. I'm glad that you are worshiping with us as a family, maybe, or with a friend. I want to read you a verse here in Psalm 16. And if you can, make it your prayer today. Psalm 16, 5, it says, Lord, I have chosen you alone as my inheritance. You are my prize. You are my pleasure and you are my portion. I leave my destiny and its timing in your hands. Come on, I leave my destiny and its timing in your hands. Your pleasant path leads me to pleasant places. Come on, that's a statement of faith this morning. I am overwhelmed by the privileges that come with following you. For you have given me the best. The way you counsel me, the way you correct me, makes me praise you more. For your whispers in the night give me wisdom. Show me what to do next. Because you are close to me. You are always available. My confidence will never be shaken, for I experience your wraparound presence every moment. My heart and my soul explode with joy, for full of glory. Even my body will rest confident and secure. Come on, how good is that verse today? Can you just thank him that he is directing you, Jesus? We thank you for today. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you that you are directing us. We thank you that your path leads us to pleasures forevermore. God, we are choosing today to put all of our attention on you. We are choosing to say, thank you, Jesus, for leading me. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you, God, even where I don't know where I'm going, even when I don't know the timing of things. God, you are leading me. You are in control. You have a plan. You have a purpose. Jesus, we love you today. Stir up my faith, Jesus. Stir up my faith, God, to trust in you even more. Come on. How good is it to be in church in a different way, in a new way, right? I know, it's so good. You can clap for that if you want to. It's so good to be with you. We have a few people here today with us, some of our staff here, so that we could worship and so that we could pray for you because we know you're facing things. You're facing new things. There's a lot of things going on in our lives right now and as a community, and we are praying for you. Know that you are not in this alone. Even though you haven't touched some of us in a while, you may have not seen our faces, we are praying for you. You are on our thoughts. You are on our mind. Isaac and I talk about you every single day. We talk about you almost too much. I promise you have not escaped our minds. We are thinking about you. We are praying for you. God has heard our prayers for you. If you have asked for prayer, we are praying for you. Know this. Stand strong knowing that you have a church, a body of people that are surrounding you, even in your room, in your family. Maybe you're going through a transition right now that is difficult. Know that we are still here for you. We are pulling through this together by faith. We are putting our mind and our hearts on Jesus, knowing that he is bringing us through. He is in control. You are not alone. So, hey, I'm glad that you are with us and tuning in. I have one of my very good friends this morning sharing about giving today. And not only does she run all the operations here at church, but if you need anything done, this is your girl. So she's pretty awesome. Sarah, why don't you come on up here, join me. Oh, thank you. Hi, guys. Oh, I'm so excited to talk about giving today, to see your faces. I see you. I see you through there. My heart really does see all of you. Miss all of our friends. All right, we ready? I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 11. I love this verse. It says, God can pour on the blessing 
in astonishing ways. Today, my heart is for us just to get our hopes up, to really meditate on who Jesus is, what his word says. It says, so that you're ready for anything. Can anybody say this has been an anything season? Woo, nobody could have uh, really prepared us for this. And everything, man, everything's included. More than just ready to do what needs to be done, as one psalmist puts it, he throws caution to the winds. Wow. Giving to the needy in reckless abandon. That's our God. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. Just get your hopes up again today. This most generous God who gives seed to the farmer and becomes bread for your meals. This is God. He becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant. Just meditate on that. More than extravagant. He gives you something you can then give away. Man, that's so powerful, which grows into full form lives so that you can be generous in every way. There it is again, everything, in every way, producing with us great praise to God. You guys, I just really feel like in this time, what's so beautiful about God is that he begins to dig deep inside of us and say, do you believe that I am a God of abundance? Do you believe that I am that God who says exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think? And I believe that in this time, as we lean in to what his word says, that the generosity is gonna begin to overflow. I love the idea of God having such a fountain. He never runs out. Sometimes we think, oh no, what's gonna happen in this season? But God is so generous. He's so above all that we can think as we lean in to his abundance, we know that our God is generous and capable of all things. So today as we give, that is the God that we serve. That is the God that we give back to. That is the God that we lift up with our finances. That is the God that we look to. So today as we give, we believe that as we lean in, our God of abundance, the God of exceedingly abundantly above all, is taking care of us. So Jesus, today, I thank you. I thank you that you're so in control of our lives. God, sometimes our flesh grows weary. Sometimes we don't know for sure if you're in control, but God, we know when we stop and we meditate on what your word says that it's true. God, that you are more than able, God, to go exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. God, I pray that would stir within us today. Your generosity would stir within us today because your word says as we give, God, you're capable of making that enough for others. God, we believe this church is called to reach so many people for your goodness, God, for your kindness, for your grace, God, that's so sufficient. So today we pray, God, as we give, God, that you would do what only you can do. God, that you would multiply it. God, you would do with our little what you can do and make it great. God, we trust you. God, every person who's worried today, God, we cast that care upon you because we know that you care for us. And we say, God, we're going to lift you up because we know that you're the God of the ages. God, from the beginning to the end. God, you've been with us and you will remain our God through every season, every high and low. God, we look to you. We look to you today, Jesus. We thank you for your generosity in our lives, that we will be an example of your generosity, God. We love you so much. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. On the screen behind me, it shows how to give. We only really have the kind of like an online moment. There's no buckets being passed here. We're going back to that though. Um, but guys, if you want to give, text that number. It's super simple. Don't shrink back. Man, I just really felt like we got to lean into whatever it is from giving to our faith, to raising our babies, to stirring up our conversations around faith. We got to lean in today. We're leaning into what God is saying to us, and we believe it's true. Guys, I'm so excited. We're going to transition into the word. We've got my favorite. We got Pastor Isaac coming on up, bringing the word. He's ready. Are you ready? You are ready. Get your Bibles. Get your notebooks. Come on now. I know we got to sanitize this thing. Come on now. Let me know. Good job. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Tiff. Woo! Get your Bibles out. Here we go. Here we go. We got the uh, we got our staff here and uh, our 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 team, our people that have been helping us put on church uh, for the last six weeks. I think it's six weeks. And um, you're doing good. We're doing good. You're getting through this. You're winning. Turn to somebody in your, in your living room, in your lounge room, in your front room, whatever you call it. Say, you're doing good. You're winning. You're winning. Come on, how good was worship? I'm serious. It was good. 
I'm not going to preach as much to the camera this morning as to my team here. We're going we're gonna to have church. We're having church. And you get to take a view into what's happening here. We believe that as we, as we go after it together, we're going to believe that um, we're worshiping and we're preaching here. And it's going to translate to wherever and wherever you get to watch this and, and be a part of it. But we're, we're having church this morning. Our team, we believe that we're moving back into days of being able to gather again. And so we're just preparing the atmosphere here. We're not shrinking back. Our team is taking ground. And uh, we're believing, as Governor Inslee and uh, different people make decisions, it, it, uh, I know construction went back. This is going back this week. And different things are going back that we're believing um, that our, our leaders are able to make good decisions while keeping people safe. And uh, yet um, a lot of us are, are, are ready to get back, at least to take steps towards um, figuring out life. It's been very difficult. I'm not going to spin it. I'm not going to say it's just all been incredibly awesome. I don't understand all of it. Some of it I do. I know I'm more thankful. I'm more, I know I'm, I'm more gratitudinal. It's a word in the Hebrew means full of gratitude. Okay, let that be your attitude. And so that is where we're at. I'm more th I just want to, I just, I'm like, I'm going to be more humble and I'm going to be more loving. I'm going to preach the gospel more and uh, I'm just going to be more generous. And so there's always silver linings. And I just, I am so thankful for the life that God has given us and the church God has given us. And so um, we'll be back. We'll be back in hopefully the next couple of weeks and in some sort of socially distanced. Uh, now you might notice that we are, have done a few things here. We have prepared and believing uh, for the church to explode after this thing. I believe that the enemy meant for evil. God's going to use it for good. And we're, gonna, we're, we're seeing, I believe, revival. We're seeing Jesus revealed and preached. Amen? Amen. So our team is here. We got Sean and Emily, we got Tiff, we got Jared and Tasha, Josh, we got my, my family right here. We have Cher over here. You might see some beautiful faces, Tori and Ben. This has been our team, our staff that has really been together for a while serving you. And we were meeting every Sunday after church, um, just planning and working. And I didn't realize, sometimes you don't realize how God is preparing you for a season. But we've spent a lot of time together before the Rona hit. And um, I don't mean to make light of it. I think for some people I'm not heavy enough, and for some people I'm not light enough. I don't want to get pulled into any sort of political argument in this season except to say that I'm a man under authority, okay? Jesus said, give to Caesar what's Caesar, but we are kingdom-minded, and I got to believe that for the church to, it's like, okay, we learned our lesson. I'm not going to plan about church anymore, but I need to gather. I want to gather and I have to be close to people. I believe that's what we were created for, is we were created. God formed us out of the dirt. He, he touched us. And we need touch, man. We need touch. And uh, we need relationship. And we need proximity. And uh, I think um, and, and, and it's going to be soon. So get your Bibles out. We're going to get to the Word this morning. If you have a towel, grab a towel somewhere and... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll make sense of that, but I believe God's going to anoint uh, the towel, metaphorically speaking, but here we are. Here we are. Let's go to the book of John, the book of John chapter 13, and uh, get your Bibles out. Our team has their Bibles and uh, notebooks, and uh, man, just I'm so proud of you, proud of our team, proud of our church. This is not an easy season, and we're fighting. We're not fighting necessarily corona. We are fighting with our faith. You're not fighting with your family right now. You might be, but you're fighting with your faith. You're not fighting over your finances right now. You're fighting over your faith. And so we want and we need God, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so anyways, I'm going to preach to my team here, and uh, you get to peek into it, and we're going to go after it this morning. And uh, John chapter 13, I got a bit of a tough assignment. It might take me a couple, might take me two weeks to get to this, because I think it's a I think it's a big subject. It might not come across as a big subject, but I do pray that God opens the eyes of our understanding that we might see something that we've never seen before. And this is John chapter 13. There's a tone and there's a shift in Jesus' ministry. And, and whenever you see a tone, whenever you see a shift, whenever you see a transition, there's usually this, this space that, that God creates. And it's really important what fills that space. Now, you can blame God for fear filling that space, but all he did was create the space 
and then we get to decide what we want to receive from that. Well, everything is shifting. The tone is shifting. Jesus all of a sudden goes from, let the little kids come unto me. Hey, little buddy, sit on my lap. To, um, so I'm going to die. And there's, a, there's this shift from healings to, to a bit of an intensity that comes from when you're about to face the cross. John chapter 13, and this is, um, this is verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he would, should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, where did he put it? The heart. The heart. He put, that's where it starts. That's why you got to keep your heart pure and clean with worship. If you're tuning in, that's awesome for the word. You get some worship. It's the, it's the whew, breaks up the soil, keeps the heart pure. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he rose from supper and laid aside his garments. And he took the next 20 hours to explain the Roman crucifixion that would take place. No. That's what I would want. I mean, Jesus, explain and over-explain what's about to go down. Because these kids are going to be confused. You're the Messiah, and yet you're going to go die. And you know they're going to get confused. So why don't you explain it to them? If I was God, that's what I would do. Because I'm a loving father. Right, Jude? Thank you, Jude. A little bit louder next time, son. Okay. We've got the car to clean out today. Anyways, um, no, he didn't do that. He rose from supper. He laid aside his garments. He took a towel. He took a towel and he girded himself. It means he, he, got, he got ready to do some business. This was not a metaphorical, hey, Sean, I'm going to wash your feet, kind of. But really the idea is here, this is a metaphor for the church. No, no, he girded himself. He got ready for some business. Yeah. He was about to clean out some Jerusalem toe jam. He was about to really clean their feet, yeah. really wash some feet. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them, I love the Bible, with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said, Lord, are you washing my feet? Question mark? Oh, what a great question. Do you have questions this morning? You got some questions? What a great question. No dumb questions, right? All questions are amazing. Questions are beautiful. Concerns. Questions, comments, ideas, thoughts. Are our lives one big Facebook feed where we just, man, as long as I can be heard and understood and like and comment and dislike certain things, and, and what a great question. What a great question. Have you ever thought why Jesus didn't answer many questions, though? Well, I know theologically, you go to Bible school, you figure out, okay, he's the truth, he's the way. He, but, 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 but really, though, if he's the son of God, and, and he is, and if he's grace, and he is, and he is love, he is. Why doesn't Jesus answer more questions? Why does he talk in so figurative, metaphorical weirdness? And he has asked a question, and he, then he asks a question to the person who asks a question. Who does that? Who does that? Jesus did it all the time. It's interesting to me how many questions we have and how important we, the importance that we put on questions, and yet Jesus didn't. We got we to gotta unlock that. Because I'm like, God, I got some questions with the Rona, right? I got some questions with why I didn't get my check. Lord, I got some questions on that person. I got some questions about my family. I'm seeking the Lord. I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm trying to get counsel. Jesus doesn't seem to care so much about our questions. And yet he is compassion personified. Lord, are you washing my feet? We'd all be on Peter's side. That's a great question, Lord. That's a great question. Peter, Peter has a good question. Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing now, you do not understand. You're just not going to understand it. But you will after this. And Peter says, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him and said, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but now Peter wants a bath. He's like, my hands, my head, everything. Jesus is like, calm down, Peter. 
you don't even you don't even know what you're talking about. He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. Why would Jesus talk like this? You know that it's just zoom, zoom. He's just launching truth missiles, and it's just like boom, boom, boom. who does that? God, why are you so mean? For he knew who would betray him, therefore he said, You are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat back down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For well, I have given you an example that you should do, 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 do. Not talk about it, not pray about it, not fast about it. Do it as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. You are not greater than me, says the Lord. You who think you can get out of serving on basis of not understanding it and being full of questions and concerns and concerns and comments. Where's the comment card? Jesus is like, not right now. I don't have a comment card, disciples. Jesus, I'd like to comment on this last supper, washing feet. Things a little weird. Where's the comment card? Jesus is like, there's no comment card. I've given you an example. That you should do as I have done. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, that's not where the blessing is. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Because of course you're going to know what to serve. Sean, what should you do for your wife right now? Serve her. Like everybody who's like barely a Christian knows that one. The idea is not, that the, the question is not in the, in the question, hey, what should you do? It's if you do, are you doing it? Are you, are you, are you, are you serving? I want to speak this morning on questions and concerns are killing you. Questions and concerns are killing you. All right, are you ready? You ready, Brandon? He's like, don't say my name. It's okay. He's way back to six feet from everybody. It's all good. Six feet is the devil's number. I say we make it five, which is the number of grace. <laughs> or that just means we're not going to be social distancing for that long because God's about to kill the corona. I believe that. Let's go with five or seven, though. Seven's a good number. Six, though. Anyways, all right. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for everybody watching, everybody here this morning. We're having church. God, if someone's tuning in live, that's awesome. If someone watches it tonight, this week, Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for believers, that we are all sinners saved by grace. We gather together under no other name but the name of Jesus, Lord, this morning. Not our name, not our good works, not our, all you. All we had to do was believe and put our trust in you. Lord, we are believers, 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 believers. We are people of faith. Because we simply receive what you have done. God, we love you so much today. Fill up every home, every car, Lord, every backyard, wherever we're listening and watching. And let us be edified and encouraged by the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, I love my kids. I love my kids. If you have kids, you love your kids. Like there's no crazier love than your kids. I mean, it's crazy how much you love your kids, right? Can I get a, can I get an amen? Yeah, I mean, you just love your kids. You just love your kids. Like, you love your kids. I love my kids. And so, yeah, every parent, though, has a moment where when you're raising up your kids, there's a moment in teaching and discipleship where they start to ask a lot of whys, right? All right, son, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Saturday. Let's go wash the car. We're going to go clean the car out. And Jude and Trent are sweet little kids, little beautiful, wonderful little bundles of joy. And so they're like, just like Peter, why, Lord? Why, Dad? And sometimes if I'm in a good mood, which I'm usually always in a good mood, can they get an amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> and I might explain to them, I might explain to them that, that um, you know what, boys? I'm going to give you an explanation because I love you. I'm going to teach you. I'm a master teacher. So it's Saturday afternoon, this is when we clean the car because I already got the vacuum out. And when you bring stuff out from the car, I'm going to be able to put it away because I'm here at home at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and it's a beautiful day. Every once in a while, I'll just give them the full explanation. 
I'm like, you know what's also, though, sometimes so cool about obedience and serving? Guess what, Trent, Jude, when you get a heart to just to, like, want to actually participate in the home and the family and task, you get to have ownership in that. And ownership is better than renting because when you own something, it's yours. And when it's yours, you value it. And I'm giving you value, and you don't even know it. And I'm, I'm cool. I'll go one hour every once in a while. I'll give them the full meal deal. But then there comes a point where the whys don't stop, right? Yeah, but why? Okay, okay. Okay. I'll give you my other shot, you know, one more bullet of truth, I'll like send their way. And every once in a while, they're just the whys don't stop. And then a dad, even though I don't want to do this because it's done to me, and I'm going to be a better parent than my parents, and I'm never going to say the famous saying, because I said so. But I remember the day I had to use that, because I needed it, because the whys wouldn't stop. But dad, tomorrow's the better day. Tomorrow, you know, it's like, son, because... I said so. Do it. Move. Now. Get cleaning. Because I said so. Because I said so. Now, it doesn't mean I don't want to explain things over and over and over. But if I teach my kids that, and that action and faith and trust and obedience is only required once you understand it, then I'm teaching that the world, the world revolves around them, and once they have clarity, then they can move. And I am subject to them, and they are not subject to the word. Yeah. And so a lot of us parent our kids like that. Do you understand now, little buddy? Okay, let me try again. And then five hours later, you're like, mm, okay, it's all right. Well, don't, don't go ahead and do that. Mommy will do that for you. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> because you're teaching them that... That, that they need to understand everything and have clarity on everything until they can move. But that counteracts faith. Because Jesus is right here saying, hey, guess what, Peter? Hey, buddy, you're not going to understand. <laughs> you, you need to put that in some of your kids' lives. Hey, buddy, here, we're going to clean this out. I love you. I'll give you a couple of thoughts. But ultimately, hey, guess what? You might not even fully understand this right now. <laughs> and have a good laugh with your kids. That you're not going to fully understand this right now. Jesus is quite literally looking at the question of Peter saying, you know what? He's, I'm just so you know, Peter, right now, you're not going to actually even understand it. I'll give you something. I'll throw something at you. I'm a good God. You call me teacher, and you say right, because I am a good teacher. But I want you to know that you're not. Jesus goes on the record and says, you're not going to understand this right now. Knowing that so much of our questions and our concerns are rebellion, pride, and insecurity wrapped up in the form of a question. See, what, what, what Peter was asking was not a question at all. Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Question mark. And then Jesus goes, you will not understand right now, but you will one day. And then Peter gets to really what this was about. It was not a question. It was an accusation. Peter says, no, you will not wash my feet. That's really what the question was. It was more of an accusation. That's why, like, when your wife puts on the dress and comes out and says, do you like my dress? She's not asking you a question. Let me help out all of the husbands out there. It is not a question. She's asking you for a statement. Now, if you want to go shopping with her at the origin of the buying of the dress that she asked you, then maybe you might have a little more room to share your opinion, okay? But when she comes out, she doesn't want you to, to answer the question. She's making up for your lack of communication to her because you should have already told her how hot she looked. But because you didn't, she now needs to ask you to say what you should have said a few minutes later. So she forms it in a question, but it's not. A question. It's tell me I'm beautiful. Tell me I'm the only one. Tell me I'm smoking hot and I look too skinny in this dress. I better eat some Oreos quick. That's what she wants to hear. But we have become so much masterful at forming accusations and statements and questions. Now that's a small Thing in life, do you think I look good? Far more monumental things in life take place when we're trying to form 
communication, we form things in questions because it's an easy way to get into a conversation. When the truth of it is, is a lot of us are bottled up with so much hurt and so much life, so much opinion and so much insecurity and fear and toxicity and it doesn't come out so all we know is we is we form it in in a question lord are you washing my feet but when jesus pushes a little bit it's really it's really just an accusation towards god and jesus is teaching listen peter you can't sit there and not move because you don't understand a lot of us are stuck this morning because we think we're asking a question from God. God, where are you? Babe, where are you? Church? You know, and you think you're innocent. I just want to know what's going on. No, you don't. You have a problem with what's going on, and you want to share your opinion. It's, it's, it first comes out with, are you washing my feet? But when the heart of it comes, it's, no, Jesus, you will not wash my feet. No, babe, no kids, no boss, no church, and you are actually saying no. And so the master teacher is actually giving you what you really need instead of what you think you need because we put ourselves at the center of the universe universe and go really we're just asking questions we just want to know just an innocent person asking a question no it's not you're bad in your eyes and yet you have a no you have an accusation you have a hurt you have something you want to say but you've deceived yourself. Hey, why? Because the first question, Satan's first mention, first mention of Satan is around a question. First time we see the devil, it's whatever the snake noise. I should have practiced more. Rattlesnake. So snake slithers into the garden, right? Just an innocent little Satan. Just an innocent little snake. And he just, he, he doesn't come up on Eve and like go, hey, let me tell you something about God. He wants you to miss out. He doesn't show up with an accusation. No, Satan shows up with, hey, Eve, oh, what a beautiful day. Hey, just have a question for you. Just have a little question. Um, so you can't eat of all the trees in the garden? <laughs> and Eve's like, no, little Satan, no. We can eat of all of the trees. See, deception and manipulation wants to have a conversation. That's why gossips just want to be like, oh, hey, oh, you go to activate? Oh, that's so sweet. No, it's not. There's evil. But how are you doing? Oh, you go to activate? Oh, you serve on a team? Oh, that's so awesome. That's so amazing. No, it's not. They want to get and have a conversation. They can entice you so then they can accuse the church, oh, you're gonna, you're volunteering? Oh, and you're getting like, yeah, it's awesome. Hey, I just wanna tell you something though. Just know that you're gonna get hurt and you're gonna burn out. That's what happens at Activate Church. They don't come out with it. You don't go for coffee and go, oh, you serve at the church, you're gonna get hurt. That never comes out in the beginning. It's always like, let's just talk a little bit. Do, 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 do. Oh, you can't eat of all the trees? Oh, that's interesting. No, it's not. Eve, abort the conversation. I'm just answering questions, though. Just answering questions. You talk to your uncle. Oh, so you go to church? Oh, that's interesting. So what do you think about church? He doesn't want to know what you think about church. Right. He'll listen to your ramblings, and when you're done, he's really looking for the opportunity to say, I hate the church. The church is political. The Bible is stupid. I'm not saying we don't listen to people, but understand this. They're not asking questions, and neither are we sometimes. Just like the enemy, he asks the question so he can hear from Eve, well, we can eat of all the trees but one, the one in the middle, the knowledge of the, tr the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we can't eat of that one because when we eat of that one, we will die. And it's at that point that the enemy starts to accuse. How do he get in with a question, an innocent little question? And now he can say, no, God is trying to keep you. And he's trying to get you to miss out. He doesn't want you to be like him. He's robbing you. He's stealing from you. And the truth of it is, is Jesus would not answer these questions because they weren't questions. They were accusations against him, against the church, against 
against truth, against grace. And Jesus said, I'm not going to be played. You can't play me. You can't manipulate me. You can't control me. The truth will set you free. Jesus goes, I don't play that. Homie, don't play that game. Eve, don't play that. Church, don't play that. When you sniff that out, ask a question. That's what Jesus did. Pharisees tried to trap him. Why didn't Jesus answer Peter's question? Lord, are you washing my feet? Because it wasn't a question. Jesus just goes, you're not going to understand this right now, little buddy. And then Peter goes, gets to the heart of the issue. No! Your question is probably a no. Hey, babe, do you like doing this on date nights? <laughs> That's not a question. So does the church like to like, do you guys really like to clap and dance? It's not a question. Don't play that game. Do you? Pull a Jesus. Do you? I remember I used to play it all the time when we started a church. Also, do you like dancing in church? I used to run right into that one. Oh, little manipulative spirit, let me tell you about dancing. And I'd waste an hour when I should have just been like, do you? They wanted to tell me, no, they don't. And they don't think it's biblical. And they don't think the church should be happy. And they don't think the church should talk about money. And they don't think the church should talk about sex. And they don't think the church should. See, let's just get to the heart of the matter. It's not that I don't want to answer the question. It's just that you're not asking the question. You're trying to accuse me. And guess what? I want to be more stable in my faith to be able to really heal that soul and get to the heart of the matter, Peter. You're not asking me a question. You're accusing me of what I'm about to do. And I want you to know that because you don't understand it, it will not stop God from moving in your life. So I will wash your feet and I will love you and tell you, you will not understand it right now, but you will. But don't think that your lack of understanding is ever going to stop God from moving in your life. And you will not understand everything. And the reason you might be stuck in your life isn't because God isn't moving. It's because you've set yourself up and you're stuck because you need to understand before you participate in what Jesus is doing. And you know what Jesus does? He goes, you're not going to understand this. You're not going to understand. And Peter goes, No. And then Jesus goes, you have no part to play. Basically, Jesus is saying, you're done, Peter. <laughs> when push comes up, you're done. And right now, some of you are in that place because you need to understand where your marriage is. You need to understand your place at church. You need to understand your place at work. You need to understand what's going on. You need to, and you need to, and you need to, understand, and you got to have clarity, and you, and Jesus is like, no. Actually, no. And you are the one going to miss out because no one is going to stop me from washing feet because I've got to do it. But if you won't let me wash yours, then you will have no part to play in me. This is, this is Jesus saying, this is, this, is, this, is, this is my will because I'm doing the will of the Father. So if you need to just stop yourself because you don't understand and you don't have clarity, then you will miss out. I'm not going to miss out because nothing's going to stop the plan of God. I'm going forward. And here's what Peter does. Here's what we always do. Then he gets weird. I wash everything. I want a bath. That's what we do. It's called flattery. See, what happens when Sean asks me a question or I ask him a question or forget the metaphor. Point is we're having a conversation and, and, and it's not really a question that's asked, but it's really more of an accusation. What happens is we try to judo, judo move, like 3D chess or whatever they call it. Okay, so you are like... I'm going to wash your feet, and I just asked a question, and you thought that I was accusing you of something, so now I'm going to do three moves ahead of you and go, no, Lord, I would never accuse you. I cannot believe you would, you would accuse me. You've been in one of those conversations? Like you try to have an honest conversation, and someone's like jumps forward, and they're like, I can't even believe we're talking about this right now. I can't even believe it. I can't even believe you would accuse me of not being a good friend. And then what we do is we lay our whole lives out and we go, I've always loved you. I've given everything. This is Peter's version of flattery. All I've ever done was try to love you. That's when, you know, that icky, sticky love moment that happens with someone? All I think about is you. I love you. I could not love you anymore. Ah! And you're like, okay, we're definitely no longer friends. Um, that was weird. I'm, I'm cool. I was just 
trying to let you know that's Peter doing. Wash everything. I didn't mean that. Yes, you did, Peter. Yes, you did. And you're not even listening to what I'm saying to you, Peter. Wash everything. That's flattery, though. Babe, I love you. I've always loved you. I could not love you anymore all the time, all the time, all the time. Oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. I can't believe you would accuse me. And it's like, I'm just asking you to take out the trash. I've forgotten once. Oh, all I'll do, I'll take the garbage out every second of every day. We make all these weird rules. All, all I do is I'll just think about garbage. <laughs> it's like, okay, so we can't talk about that. Okay, good to know. Good to know, Peter. Oh, but you were just asking a question, I thought, Peter. Wash every day, always, it's all I want, it's all I think about. Peter, 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 no you're not. This is fake, this is weird, and yet Jesus is teaching, he's answering, but he's really giving them, giving Peter what he really needs. Now, I agree, Jesus is about to go to the cross. I would expect an over-explanation of this. I mean, this is going to be a big deal, they're Messiah, prophesied. For thousands of years, right? Could you imagine being Peter and the disciples? Like, Jesus comes in your lifetime, and you're there with him, and it's Joseph's son. He's the carpenter. It's weird. You're like, how did I? Whoa, this is big. This is crazy. This is the moment that Jesus comes into humanity, and I'm here. It's kind of weird because he's Joseph's son. He's a carpenter. He's flesh. I knew that the Messiah was supposed to come in flesh, but this is still a little awkward and a little weird because he's got splinters from building tables, and it's crazy. And so there, there you are in that moment. And now Jesus is trying to say, I'm going to the cross. I wish Jesus would have sat everybody down, right? And just been like, okay, guys, Roman crucifixion, it sucks. But it's going to happen. I have to, I have to go. You don't have to, so just buck up. Jeez, just pray with me for an hour. Just listen to me. Peter, shut up. Let me, but he didn't. He, he didn't. He mentions it. The Son of Man will be, will be crucified. I will die. But I will be raised again. I wish Jesus park right there, though, and really give these people some explanation that they need. And Jesus didn't. He didn't emphasize you understanding or I understanding. He just walked around and said, eat my flesh. Drink my blood. It's like, Jesus, don't say that. Nobody understands. <laughs> right? Oh, you want to talk about Abraham? Before Abraham, I was. People are like, what? How was Jesus before Abraham? Jesus, we want to see the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to these guys, right? And yet Jesus doesn't stop. And if they ask him too many questions, he asks them a question. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And it's all, I think, kind of innocent. Like, Jesus, chill out. We just want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. What's the future of Active 8 worship? What's the future of Isaac preaching? We just want to know. Is it always going to be this faith thing? Is it always going to be this loud expression? Is it always going to be? And we think we're so innocent in our questions, and yet Jesus swoops in and says, hey, the truth of it is, is your insecurity and your pride and your arrogance and your fear and your depression and your past and your baggage, it's all wrapped up, and you've, you put this pretty little question on it, but the truth of it is, even if I answered it, it would not heal the question that you're asking, because the truth of it is, there's, a, there's an accusation and there's, a, there's the flesh and there's pride and there's some things, but guess what? Grace and truth personified stands before you, and I'm going after, and I want to heal and I want to give you what you really need do you trust me do you trust me do you have faith and and they go kind of but we really need to understand and Jesus goes no you will not understand will you still believe me no I need to know where my marriage is going will you believe me no I need to know where my business is going 
I need to know. I need a prophecy. I need some help. And Jesus swoops in and says, no, all you need to know is that I know. And I stand before you in love with you more than you could ever imagine. I'm more in control than you could ever imagine. I'm your provider, your healer, your counselor, more than you could ever imagine. Beyond, I want to give you a peace that passes your understanding. You're going after understanding, and I want to surpass it and actually give you more than you could ever imagine. No eye has seen and no ear has heard. And Jesus goes, I'm about to give you, and I'm about to hook you up. And the disciples kind of sort of go, okay, wash our feet then. Yeah, we, 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 no, 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 don't kick us out. We know we've done some crazy things. We're in it. But whenever you go overboard, you know that you're not really hearing what God's saying. And Peter, you're going to deny me. And instead of a heart of humility like, oh, my Jesus, what do you mean? It's always, no, I would never. It's this overdoing it. That's why when we see people that we hate, you, you can spot off a hater in two seconds. It's like, whoa, it's like freaky dude. I say, whoa, whoa, hey, I love you. It's like, whew. with that much love, I don't need love. I don't need hate with that much love. I don't like, I don't need enemies with friends like you. Right? Like, I don't, wait, what is going on? Guess what? You don't need to carry that. You don't need to play into that. Jesus is trying to set you free. And he's trying to set us free by going, are your questions just accusations towards me? Lord, I'm here. Where are you? It's not really a question. It's more of a, hey, God, uh, yeah. Like, uh, you're mad. You're angry. You're just really full of anger and hurt and rejection. And yet Jesus knows that. He's, he's healing Peter. He's healing Peter. He's healing Peter. You might be stuck because you're demanding something that you'll never get right now. Especially if you're dating, engaged. You might, you might sow something into your engagement right now that will set you up for years of pain because you are demanding clarity. There's nothing wrong with truly asking the question. There's nothing wrong with communication. There's nothing wrong with conversations. But if you put yourself as the God in that moment, as I will not love you fully, I will not give you my heart fully, I will not sow into you and serve 100%, you do not have my heart until I fully understand this. And Jesus is teaching right here. I can still move right now without you fully understanding COVID-19. I, I admit it. I don't fully, I would be lying to you if I stood up here and just said, hey, all of you young people who were molested and abused, I totally understand all of it. God turns everything for the good. Aren't you encouraged? It's difficult when you're in the trenches pastorally with people to always give them this incredible silver lining answer. Of course there's silver linings. There's just some things I don't understand on this side of eternity. There's some pain and there's some crosses that I don't understand. And I think it's okay to rehearse the words of Jesus. You will understand one day. But right now you just need to know that God is in control. And when you go back to his word, which our faith comes from, our understanding might come from what we see, touch, and feel. But our faith is sourced in the word of God. And I do know that he is building the church of Jesus Christ and the gates of COVID and the gates of hell and the gates of sin and the gates of whatever secularism will not prevent that the church of Jesus Christ, he says he's coming back for a bride with robes of righteousness, white. That's what I know he's building. I don't understand everything, and I'm okay with it. So the next time your atheist uncle goes, I need to understand this before I believe, look him right in the face and go, you already know. Why? Because my Bible tells me creation calls out. Believing is easy. You've made it difficult. That tells me you are a stubborn mule. Do you know how fun that conversation would be? Instead of you dancing around all those questions. Well, what about this? And what about that? And you're like trying to like hot potato the questions. And so you leave every family gathering like, oh man. Preaching the gospel's hard. Defending the gospel. Feel you, Jesus. And Jesus is like, pull yourself off the cross. I already did it. You're an idiot. 
you're playing into the fact that they, you think they're asking the question. They're accusing you, buddy. They're just trying to accuse you. Skip the questions and go, what do you really have to say? Let's get down to it. Am I anti-question? No. Am I anti-conversation? No. I'm just anti-games. See, the older you get, I'm coming up on 43. The older you get, you just don't want to play the games. Hey, it's like, so nice to meet you. I love the church. Oh, my gosh, it's amazing. So is it always going to be so loud? Probably. <laughs> you might need to be in a quieter church. Are there days where the, the sound is a little hot? Maybe. But I'm not going to play into that. Of course there's days we're training people and it goes a little this way and that song goes a little that way. And I was like, ooh, it was a little loud for me. But I'm not going to play into the spirit of manipulation, which is I'm going to ask you a question, but really it's an accusation against your worship. It's an accusation against your marriage. And some of us are, have opened up our lives to these innocent little questions. And they're as innocent as the devil in the garden. And they want access to your heart. you got to stop giving access to certain people. Through text messages, through Facebook, right now. So, how was your week? They don't care how your week was. <laughs> how are the kids? They don't care. They want access so they can accuse you of something in your Christianity, in your fathering, in your parenting, in your past. They want to identify the fact that you're a hypocrite. So when you come right out and say, I'm a sinner, I'm a hypocrite, I'm broken, not I don't want to be magnified. I simply want to magnify the name of God. I don't want to have a fake conversation with you. I'm not the Savior. Jesus is. I'm here to reveal the gospel of grace and not myself anyways. Come on. Jesus never asked us to pretend. He never asked us to play games. That's what's so great about being a Christian. I can walk into every relationship and say, I am crazy. Do you want to be friends? I manipulate. I'm a hypocrite. I'm broken. But my only hope is in Jesus Christ and him crucified. All that I am is because of Christ and Christ alone. Can we get, and our marriage was based on that. And it's what keeps us in love every day is that we're not trying to change each other. I'm letting her know I'm crazy and I'm working on it. And I'll give you updates daily. That's who you want to be married to. Is I'm crazy and I'll give you updates daily. Let's just get that right on the, just right on the book here. Life is not about you understanding. It's about trusting. You're not going to think, you're going to think you need to understand everything about God, everything about your wife, everything about the church. Of course we do membership classes here. I don't know why I'm going down this line. Of course we do conversations. But the truth of it is, is we don't do 50 weeks of convincing you of who we are so that you can go, I think all of my concerns have been answered. I just have one more. Thank you, Next. Some of us are holding our bosses hostage because they don't perfectly communicate everything the way you like it. And the fact that you're a J-N-A-Y and your love language is these things. and You don't do emails. You do person to person. You know, the only person missing out on this is you. And so you're making your boss and your family, you know, next Thanksgiving and there you are, just as manipulative as anybody else. So, Aunt Tracy, what is our next Thanksgiving? You don't care. You disagree with everything. Just come out and have a conversation about it. Stop being so manipulative right now. Right now. God wants to heal. Because, see, if you can be honest about the toxicity in your own heart, do you remember that first moment where you realize, oh, my gosh, Carrie isn't crazier than me. I'm a lot more selfish than I would have ever imagined. That's why God puts us into marriages. Because our hypocrisy can fly in friendships. Because we can fake it long enough. But you get close enough to someone, you'll see who they really are. If you get close enough to this heart, it's a very tender heart. It gets hurt very easy. And so I have to have, I need Jesus. Or else I'll get crazy and accuse people and get suspicious and judge people. Without Jesus, I get left alone. It's not good. And so Jesus goes, you don't need to understand everything for me to move. You might be stuck because you're demanding something you're not going to get right now. So Jesus says, I'm going to give you what you need. Here we go. I'm going to give you what you really need. You don't need your question answered. No, I really do. I really, really do. You don't understand, Isaac. Where I'm at, I really do have a big old question. Jesus goes, Peter, 
I know that you think you need me to explain to you right now. Jude, I know you think you need me to explain right now why this is the best time to clean the... I know you think, I know, I know, I know. But Jesus goes, this is, I'm going to give you what you really need to know about. I'm going to really give you the, 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 the thing that you need. And that's a towel. So Jesus grabs his towel and he girds himself. So this is like he's going to work. This is like he takes off everything. This is like, okay. I mean, he's, this is the real deal. Yeah, I'm going to scrub some, some toe jam. Or I'm going to scrub some crazy, dirty feet. I'm going to work. This is, this is it. This is what Jesus decides to do before he goes to the cross. <laughs> I would have sat my friends down, and he says he loved them so much. And I just would have tried to over-explain myself. Okay, so you're going to see nails go through my hands. No, no, yes, shut up. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> But you got to believe. Remember that prophecy in Isaiah? They're going to stretch him wide. So that's about to go down on Golgotha, dude, right down the road. It's good. Over and over. No, it's impossible. But how are you going to? So then you're going to. That's what I would have done with my small group. And Jesus goes, even if I did that, you actually wouldn't understand why. It's a revelation that comes through the Spirit that is not time to come. So he goes, Here's all you need to do. If you're lost, grab a towel. If you have questions, grab a towel. If, 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 you're, if, you're, if you're lonely right now, grab a towel. If you're in quarantine right now, grab a towel. Wherever you're at, just, just, just grab a towel. I, I know you think you need all of the questions understood. What you need is you need to serve. You don't need to know about serving. You need to actually do it. You, you need to, you need to, you need to, so that's the question. You need to get below the question. I need you to get low. I need you to get low and get humble because right now you're no Jesus. You will not wash my feet. Your question is not a question. It's a no. Right now you're telling your wife no. You're not asking questions. You're saying no. You're telling the church no. I will not serve. It's not a question. I just really need to understand the four-step process of serving at Activate. I need to understand. Not, some of that is good. But if you think that's the reason that's keeping you back from allowing Jesus to do what he wants to do in your life, it's an absolute lie. Jesus is like, you know what you really need? You need a towel. You really need, you really need a towel. Because the truth of it is, well, Isaac, what about good questions? What about good questions about churches I go to? And what about good questions? See, the question isn't a question, though. So Jesus is teaching us the question is not a question. The question is an accusation. The question is a no in your heart. And you'll know when you really start asking Good questions because the question will not be based about you or on you. The question will be, Jesus, how do I use this? That's the question. Jesus, I'm washing Sean's feet, and there's just a lot of little rocks and scabby skin, and I, I need to know, is it cold water? Is it hot water? Is it, is it a this? Is it a this? Those are the questions. See, when you start getting healed... And, and you start putting down your pride and your insecurity and your demands and your reprimands and your commands and your opinions and your fears and your ideas and all of your jealousy and all of your depression and all of your anger and all of your hate. And you put it down and you pick up a towel and you say, God, I don't need to understand because I know you understand. My heart is in your hands. My life is in your hands. And you have the whole world. And you know you're outside of time. You've always been. You're the same yesterday, today, and for Forever. You're God. You're awesome. You're the Alpha. You're the Omega. You're the Good Shepherd. You're the beginning and the end. You're the Rose of. You're God. You're God. You're the bread of life. You're the light. You're the bright and morning star. Here's my life. I do not need to put myself at the center of understanding when I know you do. Give me my towel. Give me my towel. And Jesus goes, now we're talking. Now you can start asking questions. Because the questions are no longer accusations of no and pride there. Hey, anybody have a good technique on um, blisters? Has anybody found 
that the Dead Sea water works really good. Sea of Galilee water, you've been using sea, you've been, do you boil it before you? Do you go double knee or do you go? Because <laughs> I find myself, if I do this, my back gets hurt because I'm not doing this for a game. Remember Jesus, he girded himself. He didn't do it to like show, hey, this is what we do. We serve each other <laughs> as if that was the real thing, right? <laughs> Questions based on what I do with this towel, God? Oh, that's a good question. Because now it's about serving. It's about God, heal my pride, heal my insecurity. The truth of it is I don't have questions. I have a bunch of no's. Worship team. I have a bunch of no's. I've told God no. I won't forgive until I understand. I won't love until I understand. I won't call them until I understand. No. The enemy has allowed you to believe what he started in the garden was, your questions are wonderful. Your questions are beautiful. There's no dumb questions. There isn't. But it's not a question. It's a dumb accusation, and there are dumb accusations. It's holding you up at work, because until you understand your boss, and until you, un this is what's so great about Jesus. Jesus is like, no, you don't. Just serve authority. Honor your father. Yeah, but God, you don't know my father. Yeah, so just do it, and I'll give you a couple extra years. <laughs> really? Yeah. We don't even need to get into if you honor, you're a person of honor. No, 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 just, just do it. Why? Because it takes faith. It's not about works. See, he just knew that we would go around with this knowledge about serving, but have an excuse not to do it because that dude's foot is nasty. And their toes are nasty. And that rash is gross. You don't know those toenails. You don't know what, what God has asked me to wash. And so you stand there in accusation. And you call it an honest Christian's question of, Lord, I'm just praying about it. Just, just fasting about it. I'm getting wise counsel about it. I love that one because we always think it's, you know, so good. It's like, oh, just need some wise counsel, Lord. <laughs> and, and, and the truth of it is, is, is no, you, you don't want to trust and you don't want to have faith. And so you're waiting for wise counsel. But really what you're waiting for is understanding and clarity and living by sight and living by feelings. And so whenever you do feel good, you're like, oh, I really like that. I just need more of that. And it's like, no, you don't. You, 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 you need faith. God, show us how to use our towels. Jesus, literally before he goes to the cross, he says, I'm going to give you an example of what to do when you're lost. What to do when you have questions and raising your kids. Pick up the towel. When you have questions in the quarantine and you don't know what to do with routine, you don't know what to do with your family, and you don't know what's going to happen, he said, pick up the towel. I don't, I don't know what to do in my career. I don't know what to do, and I, I don't know who I am. I'm wrestling with this. Jesus is teaching, Peter, you're not going to understand right now. You're not going to understand right now. But everything in you is going to say, God, I need to understand. Lord, I need to understand this. And some of you don't even believe in Jesus fully. And you're thinking, I need to fully understand. And Jesus is saying, you know, you know, you know my name. You know I called you. You know I created you. You know that there's nothing else out there. Surrender your life. Surrender your marriage. Surrender your future. Surrender your past. Take all of your life and throw it at my feet. Let me wash you. Let me, I know you don't want me to, but I have have to. It's the only way we can move forward is if I wash your past. But God, I want to be better. I want to wash you. Jesus says, no. I'm the one that will wash you and cleanse you and speak to you and heal you and give you everything you need. I'm the one. Only me. Oh, and Paul understood this. He said, all that I am is Christ. All that I am is Christ. Give me the towel. Give me the towel. Give me the towel. Give me the towel. All I want to do is wash feet at church. I don't need to understand everything. That's why you could walk into the deadest church. You could walk into the biggest church. You could walk into a church in the city. You could walk to a church in the backwoods. And all you got to do is show up to that church, whether it's Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, Catholic.
Catholic, non-denominational, and say, do you have a towel? Is there an empty towel? I just need a towel. Jesus told me all I needed to do was begin to pick up a towel and then ask questions about the towel. I need more towel techniques. My questions are based on towel techniques. Oh, do you have a towel technique? Do you have a towel technique? I need towel. All I need in my marriage is to show up this afternoon looking for a towel. I don't need my questions answered. I don't need my concerns answered. I just need to show up and say, babe, give me a towel. My kids, I just need a towel. Show up in our city and say, where's my towel? Show up to any place and say, do you have a towel? Do you have a towel? Jesus said, this is all you need. This is all you need. Let's stand up this morning. You don't need your questions answered. He'll answer some. See, the problem is God is always speaking. We just don't want to hear what he's saying. God, I need to know about my dad. God, I need to know why that person hates me. God, I need to know why my wife does that, why my kids do this. God, I need to know why I don't feel happy. God, I need to know why I'm not satisfied. God, I need to know what my next step is. God, I need to know my place to church. God, I need to know what the God I need to know. And God's like, I know, I know you will someday. Some of it you'll know now, some of it you won't, most of it you won't. Pick up a towel, pick up a towel. You don't need that question answered, you don't need that concern, hey, you need a towel. I'm gonna show you how to serve in your family. I'm gonna show you how to serve your kids. I'm gonna show you how to serve me. Pick up a towel, all you need to do. You don't need another prophecy. You don't need a Bible college degree. You just need a towel. You just need a towel. You just need a towel. And you'll start asking pastors and leaders and friends, saved and unsaved, churched and unchurched, how do you, how can I serve you? I've got a towel, I've got a towel. I've got, this isn't about me and your questions will be based on them. It'll be based on God. It'll be based on people. It'll be based on community. I want to pick up my towel and get back into the game and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. I'm back. I'm back. I forgot my towel. Some of you can't find your towel. Go find it. Go find it. Go find it. Get the dust off of it and say, Lord, here I am. begin to come forth and God will say, now I can move, now I can speak, now I can use you, now I will heal you. They weren't questions, they were accusations of pride and insecurity. I'm about to heal you, Peter. I'm about to touch you, Peter. I'm about to wash you, Peter. Peter, let me wash your feet.
through the asking of questions, through the asking of concerns, all of this, all of your breath, all of your words, all of your life, let it be used to proclaim what Jesus has done in your life. Jesus said, Peter, shut up. This is about what I'm about to do for you. Do you even understand that your life will be a proclamation and a revelation of how Jesus washed your feet, of what Jesus did for you, of how Jesus healed you, of what Jesus has washed, of what Jesus has cleansed. Peter, let me wash your feet. Let me wash your feet. Let him wash you. Church, let him wash your mind. Let him wash your past. Wash your feet. Oh, he wants to wash you. He wants to cleanse you right now in Jesus' name. He wants to wash you. He wants to cleanse you. Let him wash you. Let him cleanse you one more time. One more time. Let him wash you. Let him cleanse you. Let him speak to you. And you can spend the rest of your life proclaiming what Jesus has washed, what Jesus has done, what Jesus has said, what Jesus has done. feet I could surely wash your feet if he washed the feet of the one who would betray him Judas surely I can wash feet I might not answer your question because it ain't a question Judas it's an accusation I'm not gonna play games but I will I will wash your feet I will serve Jesus just anoint these towels today you bring about a blessing. Jesus says this in verse 27. If you know these things, comma, great, good job, gold star, the blessing, the blessing's about to flow in your life. I feel like I'm having a, a, a tele-evangelist moment right now. Friends all over the world, just touch the screen. The blessing, though, is about to flow in your life because you found your towel. You thought it was questions, concerns, and comment cards that was about to bring the blessing. But Jesus said, pick up your towel. Pick up your towel. You're about to serve. And the blessing in your marriage, the blessing in your ministry, the blessing in your finances, the blessing in this city, the blessing in the Northwest, the blessing in our community is about to flow like it's never flown. Because the church has found their towel. Some of us lost our towel. I got my towel back. No devil in hell can stop a Christian with a towel. That's why he did it right before the cross. He said there's going to be a lot of craziness that happens. But just remember, this will guide you. Not a perfectly formed question. You show up, you're meeting with your crazy family this weekend, coming out of quarantine, and you don't know what to say to your, your dad you haven't seen in three years. Lead with this. I know it's hard, but just lead with this. Some understanding will come. Some stuff will come. But do this. 
Church, we love you. Stay connected. We're working hard. I know you're working hard to stay connected. Share this message. Reach out to somebody. Let the Holy Spirit put a name or two on your heart. Reach out to the Be The Church. We're doing our best to connect, to stay connected, because we're about to come back together under the name that is above every name. We will lift up the name with, with, with all of our hearts like we never have. The best days are still ahead of us. This is the beginning of a great move of God. The church has been awakened. I'm telling you, I've been awakened. I've been awakened to life. I've been awakened to church. I've been awakened to people. I've been awakened to love and touch and family and food and friendship and community. And the devil didn't know what he was doing except he awakened the church. It's going to be good. I love you so much. I love you so much. We'll see you soon.